<clears throat> Welcome. So this question says a seesaw uh, is balanced. A five newton weight is located at four meters to the left of the fulcrum. A fifteen newton weight is located to the right of the fulcrum. And where is the fifteen newton weight located? So let's visualize. But a terminology, the um, fulcrum is the balance point and we have a 5 newton weight which is located 4 meters to this side so this is 4 meters and then somewhere we have a 15 newton weight and this is located at x meters to the right hand side and it's uh, in balance. It's, it's not accelerating faster and faster in a turning motion, or it's not deaccelerating, going slower and slower in a turning motion. It's actually, in this case, it's stationary. So it's in equilibrium. Um, the second condition for equilibrium says the sum of the torques about any given turning axis equals zero when it's in equilibrium. It's the equivalent to the sum of the forces equals zero for uh, 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 Newton's laws. And we've got to decide where to put our turning axis. And the most obvious place to put your turning axis is on the fulcrum. And so now we look and we're going to summarize our talks about that turning axis. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to say, well, Torque, of course, is uh, a force times perpendicular distance. So we have a 5 times a 4. Now, this tends to set up a counterclockwise rotation. The object is not rotating. But if we simply had this force and this lever arm about this turning axis, we would naturally get a counterclockwise rotation. Uh, motion and counterclockwise torques uh, given a positive sign. That's just our convention. And then we add on to that um, the torque caused by the other force, which is 15 newtons, and the distance is x. And again, if we only had this force and this lever arm about this turning axis. That would give us a clockwise torque, and clockwise torques by convention are given a negative sign. And this equals zero, because there's no other uh, torques about this turning axis. And so we can say, oh, fair enough. Uh, we can say 15x is equal to plus 20. What I did was I took that to the other side and said 15x, and left that where it was, and so x is going to equal plus 20 over 15, which equals 1.33 meters. So this distance x is 1.33 meters. And intuitively, you know that um, equilibrium is about balance points. And if I had a 5 newton a weight on one side and I had a 15 newton weight on the other side, I had a massless rod, my balance point would be closer to the 15 newton weight than it would be to the 5 newton weight and sure enough it's 1.33 meters from the 15 newton weight but it's 4 meters from the 5 newton weight. So everything's happy. I want to give you a forewarning though because frankly um, based on that simple analysis, I was very lucky to get the right answer. And the reason why I was lucky was because I put my turning axis through a force that I hadn't really considered. Ask yourself, is this thing in equilibrium? Yes. Is this thing therefore in equilibrium as far as forces are concerned? Well, it should be. Um, does it look like it's in equilibrium as far as the forces are concerned? I have 20 newtons pointing vertically downwards, and according to my diagram, I have no newtons pointing vertically upwards. 
clearly there must be a 20, sorry, I didn't give enough space there, 20 newtons normal force. The fulcrum pushes on the rod with 20 newtons. So this 20 newtons from the fulcrum is a net external, is, a, is an external force. And therefore, I should really be mindful of it. And the look was that although I didn't pay any attention to this 20 newtons, I by chance put my turning axis through it. And when you have a force that passes through your turning axis, it creates no torque because the force times a zero lever arm is zero. So I was really quite lucky. I, <laughs> I happened to put my turning axis through a force that I was not mindful of. So the first lesson is be mindful of all your forces. And then the second lesson, I suppose, is put your turning axis where it's most convenient for you. And if there's a, a force that you don't want to deal with, then by all means you can put your turning axis through that force and ignore it as far as torque is concerned. So we were a little bit lucky. Well, I was a little bit lucky. <laughs> um, the other thing that sometimes people do is they'll, they'll not worry about this sign convention. They'll simply say, there's my torque on one side and here's my torque on the other side and they must be equal to each other. And frankly, I can't say there's anything wrong with that. The expression is written as the sum of the torques equals zero, so I personally like to write it down as the sum of the torques equals zero. But if you intuitively could say 5 times 4 is equal to 15 times x, then that also works. What I would not do is I would not infer anything about the downwards pointing force. If you think about it, this is a negative pointing force and a negative distance. And this is a negative pointing force and a positive distance, if I'm thinking in terms of x and y coordinates. And that can lead you into a bit of a mess. So simply ask yourself, is the torque that's caused by this force tending to cause a clockwise direction? of turn or a counterclockwise direction of turn. If it's clockwise, call it negative. If it's counterclockwise, call it positive. So a simple problem, but a few little uh, um, things to think about. And there we have it.